Hello, beautiful soul, and welcome back. Or if this is the first time you're visiting us, this is permission to follow your inner GPS, your inner guided purpose soul path. I'm Angel Lady Terry Marie, your host. And today we have an amazing guest, Sharon Lynn Wyeth. And I have had the pleasure and the honor to meet her in person. And wow, did she give me a lowdown on my name. And I had mine legally changed when I was in my mid to late 20s. And the first one didn't fit at all. The second one fits better, much better. And without further ado, because I have no idea exactly where this is going to go, except it's going to be fabulous. So stick with us. Sharon Lynn Wyeth interprets names. Individuals Hire her to master the secret and science behind their relationship's name, the cause, or because most people lack skillful communication, talk at a surface level, and fail to really connect. So she helps them know how to go deeper, faster, and with greater accuracy. So please help me welcome this amazing, beautiful soul. Hello, Sharon, and thank you for being here. Oh, Terry Marie, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. Please tell us more about you <laughs> and how you came to do this work. I mean, how amazing is that? Well, it's a combination of two things. One, it was my seventh year of getting ready to teach school. And you know how you get the list of kids' names? And I was a middle school teacher. So you get the 150 names in the five classes. So you get 30 kids per class. And you start randomly putting their names down because you need a seating chart at the beginning of the year or else you've already lost control before you started. And so I was doing that. Only my brain was saying, oh, don't put Joshua next to Julie because together they're going to be clowns, but separated they're okay. And Stephanie's going to be stubborn and never want her seat changed. And Derek's going to need extra help and put them up close. And when I started the fourth class, all of a sudden it dawned on me, I went, wait a minute, this is how I think when I know the kids. I don't know these kids, I only have their names. So I thought, okay, my brain has picked up some kind of a pattern and I'm curious to know what it is and if it's accurate or you know what's going on. So my brain is thoroughly trained in patterns because I majored in math and I have my masters. So I thought, okay, and I went back to every child and I wrote down my impression of the child from the name. And I thought, I'm just going to put it away until winter break and then get it out, and see what it is. And when I looked at what I had written, because now I knew the kids, I went, oh my goodness gracious, this is really accurate. So how do I make what my brain has figured out subconsciously conscious? So I started making this chart. And I put all the Davids, I had eight Davids in my life at the time. So I put a chart, David Landis, David Shippick, David Cronick, David Wilson, you get the idea all the way across. <laughs> and then coming down, I said, okay, what have I observed about these Davids? So I put down every adjective and adverb I could think of, of what I've noticed on each one. And then I said, okay, what do they have in common? Ah, got to come from David. What do they not have in common? It's got to be somewhere in the other names, middle and last. And I made so many charts with so many attributes and whatnot trying to figure it out first whole names and then i started saying wait a minute this person over here has the same attribute but it's not the same letters as this one over here so to make a long story really short it took 15 years to figure out all the patterns three years then of testing in over 70 states or 70 countries sorry including russia and india and china okay and then um i published the book and the book is an authentic bestseller and so it's kind of exciting. It literally teaches how to do this. So it's duplicatable. And I train people how to do this, you know, and people can learn literally what took me 15 years to figure out. They can literally learn how to do it in 15 hours with me. And then they're off giving readings. You can give a one hour reading after you've worked with me for 15 hours. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. That's amazing. And how you know that is it was an intuitive start in a sense so you have an amazing balance between the right and the left more left because of your training would that be fair uh left because of my training and anytime we had to dig do those diagnoses or those tests you know are you right brain or left brain i was so left brained off the charts they used me as an example like, this one's really <laughs> left brain man but on the other hand i've been meditating ever since my 18th birthday 
And so, and reading. And I've been reading spiritual books ever since I was 13. That is my digest for reading. So that's my attempt to develop that right side of my brain. <laughs> well, apparently it has worked very well. Because look at what you did with that. See those seating charts and you hadn't even met the children yet. No, not yet. And so what's really great is if you can figure out, you can compare two names and you can see how people are going to get along and what's going to irritate them about each other. And so like in my classroom, every, the first day of every month, we had a new seating chart for the kids. And I do a lot of group work in math because it helps, you know, everybody. And so the first time I put them all together with people I know they're going to like and get along with. And every month I rearrange it so that they're getting along with people less and less. So by the end of the year, they're all with the people that they couldn't stand at the beginning of the year. And, and how did that work out? Because it's very important because I taught middle school for kids to learn how to get along with each other just as much as it is for them to learn their math. And so we were That's teaching that true. all the way through. And because I can see the names and what's going to happen, I knew who to put with whom. And so the, the actual, the hardest ones for people, I put in February. And when kids would go, oh, I can't do this with them. I'd look at them and I'd go, you've got February and it's the shortest month. And if you can't figure out how to get along, I'll put you together, together again in March. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I'd, I think I'd figure it out pretty darn quick. <laughs> They did. They learned how to cooperate. And by the end of the year, my classes all got along so well. And if you notice, if you go any place and you take a seat, the next day, if you're coming back to the same place, you want that same seat. It's like you've got ownership on that seat. And if somebody else takes it, it's like, they took my seat. And that's how kids get very possessive in a classroom and it's their seat. And when I keep moving them all the time, they get where the whole classroom is theirs and everybody is theirs and they don't get so mad at everybody else for taking their seat. That's amazing. And so it's, they learn how to share. They learn how to share. They learn how to get along with each other and you have given them a priceless life lesson. I mean, oh my goodness. <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> had a teacher like you when I was growing up, instead of telling me you don't see that, I go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, they talk you out of your intuition and, and things, but that's what they know. That is so amazing. How did you, how, how, <clears throat> I don't want you to give away your secrets, but how, what else would you like to share with us? How did you transition from being a school teacher and being the other uh, administrators to doing what you're doing now full time? Well, I, after 40 years in education, I decided to do this full time, but I was doing this part time on the side. And so it slowly built up because as I was experimenting, I'd be going, okay, do you know anybody that has like a double R in their name, Terry Marie? Well, <laughs> tell me about that person. And then I'd write down, I go, no, that comes from this letter. That comes from that letter. Maybe it's this one. You know, and I was bugging so many people. I'd see them on the airplanes. I'd see them at the playground. It didn't matter. I was like, you know anybody with these combinations in their name? Tell me about this one. You know, because I was trying to figure out all the patterns. And so through doing that, people would then ask me, uh, what are you doing? Why do you want to know? And so I told them I was figuring out these patterns. And this is what I figured out so far about their name. And they knew I didn't know them. So they'd be going, oh my, is that ever real? That's almost scary. And so people ask me all the time, are you psychic? And I think, you know, gifted people that are psychic can't teach what they're doing. They've either got it or they don't. Mm -hmm. These are patterns. You can teach it. You can learn it. Everybody can learn it. You know, so it's like, yeah, I, I use my intuition to help me to get through this and to figure out all the patterns, but it doesn't take a psychic to be able to use the skills. And so I did it more and more. And then people invited me to go talk to other people. And, and because of that, I ended up in over 70 countries giving talks on it in 49 of our states before the book ever came out in 2006. That's almost, not quite, but almost more than I, it's, it's fathomable, fathom, anyway, close to not being able to understand. <laughs> I'm not getting that word out at the moment. It's like, okay, guys. <laughs> wow. And 
just not to leave you in suspense, the double R means that you need a ton of alone time to reflect and to rebalance yourself and that other people can throw you off balance. And therefore you need that alone time to say, you know, what went on today? Anything I want to keep? What do I want to change? How did I feel about this when everybody else isn't around me? So I have to feel at the same time I'm trying to react and cope. And so the people with an R can do a lot of work on their own because yes. they enjoy their alone time. It didn't always used to be that way for me. And my, my given name is actually Teresa. With, and my mom named me that so she could call me Terry, uh -huh. which is and, interesting. And once you've had a name for seven years, guess what? That's it. That's the personality. But <laughs> you go back to the birth name when you want to know the timing of when you're going to learn what in your life and what your what I call the overarching umbrella is, why you're here, what's your blueprint, why'd you come. The seven lessons in your life all comes from your birth name and the timing for those lessons to learn it and how you're going to learn those lessons. Interesting. Okay? How the Very lessons are going to come. And so that's in the birth name. And then how our personality develops and how we go about those lessons is all determined by the name we're currently going by. I believe that and it's not even just a belief that that's like an innate knowing and I don't even pretend to know anything much about how a name plays. All I know is that, that it does because some people, well, some names have some predispositions <laughs> or it seems like. Yeah, well, and some are highly, highly sensitive. I was giving a talk and in Florida last Monday. And one of the ladies asked me something about the first vowel and the first name because I was giving a talk to relatives and how to greet people so that you didn't turn them off before you ever got started. Right. So she asked me something about the first vowel and the first letter, you know, that sometimes the first vowel could be the first letter. And I said, yes, of course. Then it's just stronger, you know, when it's that way. But she looked at me, she goes, and, and I said, yes, of course. And she goes, well, we don't have to. She was all incensed that I said, of course. You know, like somehow I had insulted her. And I thought, oh, I see exactly where that is in your name. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I'm not into hand-holding so much. Yeah, I have a lot of patience when people are learning it. You know, and I'll answer the same question a thousand times because I want them to get it. But you know, I really look at their names when I'm actually teaching a class. And this one, she was just like, her reaction, I thought, hi, oh, that's really sensitive. And I looked at her name tag and I went, okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, they can almost be TMI at times, could it? Well, it's how fast can you take it in? You know, like if I'm talking to a big group, it's very hard to keep the focus of where I'm going with the talk that what I'm wanting to show them or introduce them to, and then at the same time, keep everybody's names in gear, you know? Oh and, gosh, I think left brain would come in really handy for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's, um, but it's fun. It's really fun. I love doing that. I love being able to ask somebody, you know, if I can show them a demo or just for 30 seconds or a minute, and just say, this is some of the qualities in your name. But, you know, it's a gift to know who we really are. And why yeah. are we here? And that everybody gets seven lessons. And that nobody gets to be on a pedestal. And I don't care how easy their life looks. You look at those lessons and you think, behind the scenes, this is what's going on. You know, regardless of how graciously, you know, they present themselves. And so you don't put anybody on a pedestal. You don't get jealous about anybody. You know, you don't feel badly for anybody. You just say, wow, did you pick some difficult ones? <laughs> you know, but it's the soul is choosing. You know, and I, I happen to believe that soul chooses with guidance on that side, what we want to learn on this side or what's appropriate for us. And I agree. About it. I agree. How has... Okay, give it, give it to me one way, please. Um, how, that's a better way. So would you share some of the results or the transformations that your clients or your students have experienced with learning about their names and how to do this for themselves and others? 
Well, the one thing that every student of mine has had or that says is they look at it and they go, we no longer judge anybody. Good. Stop judging because we can see so clearly who they are. So there's, when they do something, it's not like they, oh, they did that on purpose to hurt me or they, or, you know, or whatever. It's like, there's no reaction to what they're doing because you're just saying, oh, of course they're that way. Of course they're doing that. Look at those letters. Look at that combination. <laughs> it's like, well, of course. Why did we expect anything differently? You know? And so the judgment goes out the door. And that's what's wonderful because you can look at every person as a human being on a pathway, just like you're on the pathway and I'm on the pathway. You know, so that's the one common thing that all of my students that have learned this have said. Then my individual clients, when they call and we go through their blueprint and what they came to do and what they came to learn and how they're going about it, over half of the people I've given readings for have written me within the following week and said, OMG, you are changing lives. And, you know, because they feel so empowered with the knowledge. And I go, it's not me. It's nameology science. It's the science of what's giving you what you already knew. And now you're giving yourself permission to re-acknowledge that that was your plan initially. And now what are you going to do with it? So here, here's a question I just got from you and I are in total agreement. And I'm sure that there are lots and lots of people who understand the the premise of the concept of spiritual agreements or contact contracts what we say we're going to be learning you know experiencing on this side of the veil so how does that connect with the name that human parents give this soul okay i love this question because if when there were still only seven religions on the planet, according to Dr. Eugene Whitworth, who has written one of my favorite books called Nine Faces of Christ. And anyway, I've read all of his books, but they're fabulous. <laughs> and I've studied with him. So according to him, and he's traveled all around the world, and he was asked by India's, India to even translate the Bhagavad Gita into English because he understood it so well. And anyway, he's just a remarkable man. Okay. And so um, anyway, according to him, when there were still only seven religions on the planet, they all agreed on 10 basic ideas. And one of the ideas that they all agreed on, because he could read all the ancient scripts, he spoke those eight languages, okay? And he could read all of that. And he says what they all agreed upon was that the incoming soul impresses upon the one naming them what they want to be called. And if that's the case, we name ourselves. Now, there's a science out called somatics. It's C-Y-M-A-T-I-C-S. And that's about sound and vibration. And they literally say that whatever sounds we identify with the most changes our DNA. So if I say to you, who are you? Terry Marie, don't you answer with your name as if that says it all? And that's the vibration you attune to. So your whole body attunes to that vibration of your name. So indeed, your name does say it all if you know in nameology science and know how to interpret it. Well, I'm going to let you in on a secret, and I know nobody else is ever going to hear this because this is <laughs> just teasing. <a> little <laughs> I was named something totally different, and when I was, I don't remember my chronological age, but I, and I thought about it for a year because the name that I was given at birth never fit, and it was actually handed down four or five generations. And every time they added another letter. So I actually, so my original birth name actually had double R and double T. And well, the I renamed at the top of your game. All the way <laughs> the top of the game. Anyway, go ahead. Um, I renamed myself legally to Teresa Marie. Teresa used to be my middle name. So because my mom wanted to call my sister and I by non-gender specific nicknames like oh gosh so i got tons of mr mail and one day i finally had enough leo in me to say Kuh! so i changed the y to ie so that was the first change and then once i knew what to put with teresa i always thought that I was going to put something in front of it but so i put marie back and boy i was off that was it and i have been calling myself terry marie for i don't know how many years but it's a lot longer than the other one Right. But the other one would give you your layout and your lessons for this lifetime. Okay. And then how you go about those lessons 
is what you're calling yourself now. So your methodology is determined by your current name, but your blueprint is all by what's on that birth certificate. Well, thankfully, I've had my birth certificate amended, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not discounting what you said, and I'm not going to tell y'all what it was, okay? So it's, don't ask me. <laughs> well, you're talking about contracts and agreements before you yeah. come, okay? Now, my understanding of that is that contracts, there's a karmic consequence if we fail in one of our contracts. If we fail in one of our agreements, there's no karmic con consequence. That was an agreement that we're going to do our best, but who knows? But a contract is like, oh, no, no, that's, that's written in gold ink. You know, that one we've got to do. Okay. okay. You're the first person that I have spoken with. And so there may be others, but you're the first person that we're having this conversation that actually sees the difference between a contract and an agreement. I like that. Okay. So, so on the contracts, right, how we fulfill them depends on what the current name that we're going by but knowing what they are is written in our birth name now you can you can request to the karmic board that your contract gets changed because you're the author of your book while you're down here right mm -hmm. so when you legally change your birth certificate what in essence you're doing is you are legally changing your contracts and your agreements nice that was about the time i made a conscious shift whether i was totally consciously aware of it or not to change my whole life right and then it would have shifted because mm -hmm. you're changing your agreements and your contracts okay so that's what's going on that's what's happening so anyway. <laughs> the second book my second book out my first one is know the name know the person all about the personality and how you can tell anybody's personality and what they'll do, what they'll feel, what they'll think. Then the second one is know the name, know the spirit. So it's really, what does your soul want? What does your soul want you to know and learn and do? And what do you do if your soul disagrees with the personality? How do you handle that? So I have given many, many seminars on know the name, know the person. But this February coming up is the very first one on know the name, know the spirit. And because people that have taken classes from me before and they always say, oh my God, this is the best class because I don't waste anybody's time. We are in it and we are doing it the whole time. I don't have any guest speakers. We don't try to sell you anything. We just make sure you've got this. And they get so excited because by the end of the class, yes, they can do it. You know, everybody can. And so we've got the very first know the name, know the spirit. And it's longer than the 15 hours because there's some background information that needs to come in of what the different religions around the planet agree as if there was a universal religion what would that say what would it do and that's what is first presented for consideration because that's the angle that i'm coming at when i'm saying look what the soul wants and look what your contract says and look where your agreements are and to know that contracts hello you better do those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In agreement, change your mind, change your mind, you know, but, um, but anyway, that's all coming up in February. And because so many people have enjoyed the know the name, uh, know the person seminar, I only have two places left for the February one for know the name, know the spirit. If anyone's interested, you got to contact me right away. Now, and so let's not wait till the end. How can they contact you about that now? So in case somebody jumps off and we'll, we'll repeat it again at the end of, of your interview, but how do they find out about this beautiful? The easiest way to find out or contact me is info at know the name dot com. Because that about is the simple. Name. <laughs> info at know the name dot com. <laughs> doesn't get more simple than that. <laughs> yeah, and I always say, if you forget, like the website is knowthename.com. And if you're driving and you can't write it down and you think, oh, I want to remember that. I need to remember that name. I need to know the name. Oh, that was it. Know the name. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Do you already have the book out, Know the Name, Know the Spirit? or It's been out. I, I'm going to put that on my book list. I'm just saying that right now. <laughs> I'm going to put that one out on my list. This is so amazing. Now, what? I have a freebie that has just come out. It came out January 7th, and it's called Know the Name, Know How to Connect. 
And if you want the ebook, it's absolutely free. Go to the website, you'll see, get the free ebook here. Just click on that button and it'll take you there. Now, if you'd rather have it in book form, it's very inexpensive because it's really my gift out to the world. It's like, we're all so busy and how do we connect mm -hmm. with people and how do we show our compassion and that we actually care when we're all in such a hurry? And how do we get to know somebody and communicate clearly with them? And all of that lies in the very first vowel of the first name. And so I have literally taken the first vowel of the first name and it's in the know the name know the person book is the second chapter but i have expanded it extended it really gone into detail with it and expanded it all out so there's so much more information including like what kind of gifts you'd buy for somebody how their lessons are going to come all of it it's all sitting there in that bell and i've expanded it all out and it's free as a download if you want the ebook and it's very inexpensive if you want it in a hard copy yeah, I'm a hard copy girl. As, as intuitive and channeling, it's like I've got to have a hard copy. <laughs> yeah. Because my Kindle, it's, it's hard to go, okay, dousing, where was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, that drives me insane. Well, it's only $12.95 for the book if the hard copy, because I'm really trying to get it out there where exactly. it covers the expenses of, the, of getting it done, but it doesn't, I'm not making a profit on it. It's literally my gift to the world saying, here is just one letter of your name. Look at all the information that's here. But that's where our communication style lands. And if you want to know more, get the other books, you know, or come take the class. But this is our communication style, you know. And, it, and in learning about others or the letters, we also learn about ourselves. Oh, most definitely. And in fact, when people read about it, they go, Oh my gosh, do you have a peephole into my room, into my house? <laughs> have you been watching me? <laughs> it is absolutely, I love it. It's just, what else would you like to share with us? Because this is, this is totally fascinating. And they're all a buzz up there. And it's like, okay, so they're, they're not in agreement as to what to ask. So please, <laughs> you might just okay. share with us. So, I was like, okay, guys. <laughs> So the first vowel of the first name, it doesn't matter whether it's the first letter, second letter, third letter, it doesn't matter the position, but the first vowel of the first name is our communication style. What kind of gifts we like, um, our, how our lessons are going to come to us, you know, what our learning style is. There's so much sitting in that first vowel. That's know the name, know how to connect. Then the first letter of our first name is our first impression that we're giving people. And the last letter of our first name is the lasting impression that we give people. And the first thing they'll talk about is behind our backs. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you, would yes. you mind doing a little bit of an E for the last? <laughs> last That's generosity of spirit. That's, the E is the last letter is generosity of spirit. So everybody would say, you know, she's really generous. She gives okay. us her time. You know, she's not pushing us to be in a hurry when she's working with us. She's very generous with us. And so that's what they're going to say behind your back first is about your generosity of spirit. I'm really happy that I changed the Y to IE. Yes. <laughs> very happy. Good. Good. <laughs> because that's, yeah. Anyway, that is so amazing. So info at knowthename.com is how you get in touch with this beautiful lady if you want to be in the very first. Yeah, very know first the time name. I'm offering this. Pardon? Yeah, the very first time I'm offering this class, Know the Name, Know the, spirit. Know the spirit. And the other thing I do in my workshops is, first of all, you get all your cheat whatevers so that you don't have to memorize anything. You get all of the devices so it's like cheating, you know. <laughs> do it until your brain's picked up because of repetition just like the right. phone numbers that you have memorized versus the ones you don't right so you can do the whole thing with none and of course our cell phones have almost ruined that because now we just push a name <laughs> pretty much <laughs> yeah so um but you get you end up with all your little cheat notes so that it's very fast you just lay out somebody's name and then you can just you you can just read it almost it's like oh I got it. I got the understanding. I've got the key words, you know, and that you understand what's going on behind the scenes. And the other thing is, is that we don't want to leave the house and get interrupted. So the house where we hold the seminars, um, I cook and we have these fabulous meals so that nobody has to leave 
right? And then we, of course, we have to have snacks and all that other good stuff too. So I always say that it doesn't matter how good a seminar is, if the food's not better, then you're not going to like the seminar. So the food is always fabulous. Isn't that the truth though? <laughs> we are so interestingly wired. <laughs> If the lunch is not good, it's like, well, I mean, it was okay, but you know, the lunch sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the first thing. And then, you know, Terry Marie, from speaking and, and giving talks in different areas and joining other people's conferences and contributing, um, I can tell you that when we talk on the East Coast, anywhere on the East Coast, it's really interesting because after the talk, everybody says, do you want to go and do right? They invite me different places. And it's always something that mentally enriches us. So the East Coast is all about learning and about, are we going to the opera? Are we going to a lecture? Are we going to go hear this person or go do that? You know, what are we going to go learn? Then if you go on the West Coast and you give a talk, afterwards, everybody goes, says, you want to go sailing? You want to go surfing? You want to go horseback riding? You want... It's always physical in nature, oh, right? Wow. It's always physical. So the East Coast is mental. The left coast is physical. And the middle of our country, it's always, where are we going to eat? It's always <laughs> emotional. We've got to feel our emotions and buy food. Then we're good to go. Then we'll discuss what else we may want to do. <laughs> How amazing. That is, this is... See, it's just patterns. It's after a while. What happens when you're where? You know, I knew you know, I knew the first moment that we met at the New Media Summit in Austin in September of 2018, depending on when you're watching this, y'all, I absolutely knew it was like, yes, I want to feature you as a guest because what you do is so extraordinary, so amazing, and so enlightening. It's like, holy smokes. <laughs> and it's <laughs> different. And it... it and your energy is so magnetic, and I really have enjoyed this time together. You have given us so much. So please, one more time, please tell us how our viewers can find you, you know, a website, your free gift, your social media. I have a feeling they're going to want to. <laughs> the website is knowthename.com. The, if you want to get me directly, it's info at knowthename.com. And the freebie, just go to knowthename.com, click on the bot button that says free ebook. <laughs> and then look at Know the Name, Know How to Connect. And of course, we have the other books that are Know the Name, Know the Person for the Personality, Know the Name, Know the Spirit, if you want to know about the soul. And then sometime later in this year, out will come Know the Name, Know the Health, because even your health predispositions are hidden in that name of yours that gives everything. And the coolest part, Terry Marie, is that you can compare two names and you can see where the issues are and the solutions for those issues. And mm -hmm. all of your challenges that come in your name, like what you came to learn, how to really go about it or what you have to accomplish on the process of going about it, all of that sits in your name. So not only are the questions in your name, the solutions are in your name if you just know how to read it. I see some extra reading in my not so distant future. <laughs> the least expensive place to get the book mm -hmm. and save yourself over twelve dollars is when you order it off the website instead of going through Amazon or Barnes and Nobles or all those other places that carry it. Um, if you just come to the website, you save tremendously because again, I'm here to give the knowledge out. That's my gift to the world. I love the way you're doing it. I love the energy that comes with and through it. And it is absolutely amazing. Perhaps sometime in the future, you'll come back. Oh, it would be most delightful. Yes. Thanks, Terry Murray. Appreciate you're it. You're very welcome, Sharon. Thank you, beautiful soul. Please do share this. It is, there's a lot in here. <laughs> <laughs> and after you're finished viewing this and sharing it, please come by angeldreamteam.com and get your free gift, Angels, Success, and Prosperity. Become a mover and shaker of your reality. Thank you for joining us. It is a pleasure and an honor to be sharing the journey and the path with you. Bye-bye for now, beautiful soul.